So this is interesting and it didn't happen last night, but the night before, but I want to tie it to an article that came out today because it's really important. Okay. So explosions and fire engulf Russian ammo depot in occupied Ukrainian village. And so uh, we see the occupied Ukrainian village of Sidove in Donetsk Oblast, a sizable Russian ammunition depot is on fire. Apparently there are helicopters and munitions and all kinds of other things there. And this guy's riding his bike toward it for some reason I don't quite understand. It's the same thing in this Twitter uh, post here in Occupied Sadove. Donetsk Oblast, a large Russian ammunition depot is ablaze, causing explosions, according to Petro, I can't pronounce his name, an advisor to the mayor of occupied Mariupol. And then we see in Newsweek, it came out, because I always try to triangulate and make sure that my facts are correct, and, and you don't just trust Twitter, you triangulate and make sure that you're looking at uh, legitimate sources. So here's Newsweek, it's 54 kilometers from Mariupol, kind of, I think it's n near the uh, beach. Uh, going down toward the the uh, the sea, uh, it isn't clear what caused the explosion. Some observers assess that the blast could have been caused by an attack carried out by Ukraine using longer range ballistic missiles fired from Army tactical missile systems. Attackums donated by Washington. Here's a video of that, and I'm just going to read what's in here. I'm not going to show the video. Ukrainian armed forces have launched a missile attack on an ammunition depot in the town of Sadovo near Mariupol City in the eastern Donetsk region of Ukraine. A little bit more telegram channels, Ukrainian telegram channels reported. According to the report, helicopters belonging to the invading army and other military equipment are also located in the area. And then there was a little bit more helicopters were damaged as a result of the strike. There were reportedly two consecutive explosions in the area. And you can see that there was something going on. I mean, it's just it there there was something. Okay. Now, what is that? Why does that matter? And it's a day old and, you know, you may have seen it elsewhere, I understand, but that they're striking there. Again, this is a pattern that I'm seeing there. While the front lines are in what looks like some kind of stalemate and neither the Ukrainians can get through to, toward the Russians and nor can the Russians get through and Avdika to attack Ukrainian territory. This is going to be, I think, the wave of the future. Okay. Now, Couple that with this article today. So we see this, Ukraine's defense industry confirms mass production of Ukrainian long range drones. Okay, long range drones. And they've been working in drones for a while, but now these are kamikaze drones capable of reaching a target of a thousand kilometers away. That's a long distance. We're gonna look at that in just a moment. Kiev will allocate seven times more money for the development, modernization, and development of the country's defense industry in the next year than it did in 2023, which was already pretty significant. All right. Now, Zelensky has promised uh, the Ukraine is changing its tactics and will strike Russia unexpectedly to prevent a stalemate. So here's, let's look at the deep state map and try to understand this. This is the deep state map and you can see I put a thousand miles away. Here's what, this is actually 989 miles. It, a thousand would be off the, off the screen. Moscow is only about half that distance, a little bit more than half that distance from the border of Ukraine. They could theoretically from the border of Ukraine strike Copenhagen or strike Italy or, right? I mean, that's that's the distance that a thousand, obviously they're not going to be striking Copenhagen or Italy, but that's the distance that a thousand miles away is, or th I'm sorry, a thousand kilometers away. Okay. So um, now, Here's how, how I read this. I look at this and I think, okay, well, you know, you have all these targets that you want to strike down here, but they're covered by air defense. And if you start hitting all kinds of targets, you hit an oil, oil refinery and other military bases and other targets within Russia. So if you've heard the, the phrase, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, there's a real truth to that. Uh, I've been in the martial arts for years and, and a big guy falls down real hard <laughs> compared to a little guy, right? There, there's something to that. Russia is this huge territory. How could you possibly, like, let's let's look at this and just like take our, our like look at what a thousand mile perimeter would be. Uh, and it's not even on the screen here, right? I mean, just all this expanse throughout Russia. How can Russia possibly defend all of that? They, the truth is they can't with air defense artillery or some kind of missiles to shoot things down. They'll put things around. They'll ring Moscow. They'll ring St. Petersburg. They'll probably put things on some military bases. But there are things within a thousand miles that Ukraine can hit and they will be able to hit with impunity, including if Russia does it to them, the electrical grid, which I, 
I, it would be a bad move to try to repeat last year if you're ru Russia. So they really have all kinds of opportunities once they have these homegrown thousand mile, uh, thousand kilometer range suicide drones. So I, I think that that's what's going to be happening next. This is going to be the next phase of the war. Yes, the, the front lines are frozen, but they're going to be able to inflict such damage. And if they can do this to the oil refinery, here's another prediction. If they can, if they can hit oil production facilities in a way that they can throttle production of oil, it's like taking away their ability to, to work or to eat or something. I mean, it's, it's going, a third of Russia's income comes from oil and gas. So, I mean, if they can do something like that, that would be uh, so significant. It's, it's hard to even explain. Okay. So that's what's happened over the last day or so and what's going to happen next, in my opinion. I hope that helps you understand what's going on, the context. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.